Alrighty, guys. Thank you for joining me on this wonderful live broadcast. If you are tuning in, this is the first live podcast, and we are going to be recording this. So let's make sure that's going in the background because I would assume that's pretty important. So we are definitely recording in the background. We are good to go. We are moving in the right direction. If you guys are tuning in, we are live on Facebook. We are live on YouTube. And we are live on Instagram here. And eventually we're going to be live on Twitter as well, which I think is Periscope. So hopefully that works out the way it's supposed to. I keep getting a warning that I'm dropping some frames, so if I am, I apologize, guys. I will figure out what the heck is going on here in the near future. Let's go ahead and share this as well to Facebook and Twitter. Because why not? All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get into this. My name is Jacob King, and what I want to talk to you about today is my experiences with production and what got me into it, what got me into all of the different areas of production. We're going to go through these in a little bit of a chronological order as best as I can remember, and we're going to break some things down. So first up would be music, how I got into music. I, oh man, I was pretty young, maybe eight, nine, somewhere in there. I had piano lessons and started learning piano. I was taken weekly, I think twice a week to piano lessons. And then eventually that became piano and guitar lessons. I didn't do very well with guitar. The teacher I had at the time too, he was pretty young. I think he was early college or late high school. And he didn't know a lot on how to teach. He was still kind of learning, especially learning with a 9, 10-year-old and, you know, what ways to teach me. So more or less, we spent most of the time doing guitar lessons, learning bass lines on my E string of songs that I heard instead of actually learning. And I never went home and really practiced that. I learned a little bit on my own and... I mean, it was okay. I enjoyed piano quite a bit. We had a few recitals, and that was fun. Excuse me. We uh, we played quite a bit, and eventually that went into learning again in high school. And in high school, I taught myself the Halo 3 theme song, Never Forget, and played a little bit of a different rendition for the talent show called Crescendos in high school. And I got back into guitar at that point in time. Bought two guitars, bought an amp, started teaching myself. And then up through college, I was playing maybe two to three hours a day. And kind of time fast forward, and I, I fell out of guitar and piano a little bit. But I got really deep into recording, really deep into different areas of making music, especially EDM. I can remember early freshman year meeting up with Jacob Dragash online and we were talking about Reason 8. That tells you how long ago this was. And Reason 8 was pretty cool because we were both doing EDM at the time. I think he stuck with it a little bit more than I did because I definitely fell out of it because I had a cracked version. But then I got back into it uh, just after graduation when I was playing very heavily on my guitar at Ball State and it was pretty sweet to get back into it. That eventually opened up a few different doors. I met Darian Colbert, uh, he goes by Marcel, and I opened a record label and released four 
or five albums for him. I think one of them is a single. So that was really, really neat. I learned quite a bit about music, quite a bit about audio and the music world. That doesn't transpire over for me at all for video, which is kind of a disappointment. And so I'm kind of picking it back up. The nice thing about a couple of the Mac programs I use is they all function the same way with the equalizers. So I am getting better at audio for my videos. And I think microphones would help as well. So that'll be nice. But that was kind of how music took over a little bit. I definitely was focused on opening up my different music ventures. I really wanted the record label to go big. I wanted to do a lot more with it. I met with a couple different artists. I learned contractual law for it. I wrote a couple different contracts. Uh, and that's where kind of things fell apart. Kids and artists and, and younger people were afraid of these contracts and afraid of, of what I was offering them. So they didn't really stick with it. They, they came, they met, everything was great. And I was very fair. I was absolutely fair. I didn't want to take advantage of anybody. I didn't want to steal from anybody. I wanted things to benefit them because I knew they were trusting me. And I wanted to earn that trust, so I was going to make sure that they were taken care of. And then obviously I was going to benefit from it, from the exposure I was going to gain. I wasn't looking for much more than that. But things kind of fell through, and after a few different contractual meetings, I decided to kind of not so much focus on the music stuff. I still have all my equipment. We're still in my studio right now. And I refuse to get rid of any of it because I love it so much. But that was music, and it's been a lifelong thing. It's, it's not gone anywhere. And as we go through these different areas of production, we're going to realize that every little bit of it has been lifelong. So next up, we're going to talk about website design and how I kind of got into that. When I was much, much younger, we actually, my grandfather, I shouldn't say we. I was there. I was on his lap. I was like two or three. But my grandfather, he built the very first medical billing program. And I happened to be on his lap. And I remember being around when he was doing computers. And he would take me when back in the day you had to replace RAM regularly. And so I would crawl under the desk with him. And I, I remember these. One of the few memories I have of being younger. And we'd crawl under the desk. And he'd open up the side of the computer. He'd pull all of the different stuff out, the RAM, the hard drive, et cetera, and he'd exchange it all out. And I always thought I was helping him build a computer even though I was doing nothing. And it was pretty fun, and that was kind of my first experience with computers, watching him code. I spent a lot of time on paint doing these crazy eight figures. So what I would do is I'd draw an eight with a paintbrush, and then after the eight was done, I would just take the lines and go like this. It was crazy. And then I would color each of the different sections, colors. So it was pretty cool. And that's kind of a little bit of graphic design, but we'll hit that next. So I was really fascinated with computers. Fast forward to fifth, sixth grade, actually. Beginning of sixth grade, I started at Daleville. And while I was there, these kids were playing RuneScape. And I know many of my friends have played RuneScape. It is a fantastic game. I have the mobile game, the old school RuneScape mobile game on my phone. You can find me at K and G K T N if you want to play there. So, anyways, on RuneScape, when you were wanting to talk to people, you would type your different stuff. And after typing, you could have it pop up over your head. And after it popped up, some people had colors or rainbows or flashing or doing different things and I was like what the heck is that and after a little bit of questioning of all these different people I found out that it was HTML code that they were embedding before and after the words and the game itself was registering that HTML code and it was interpreting it and making it do what it was supposed to do change the colors do all of the different things that it needed to do and it was a really sweet situation. So I started learning HTML code. Fast forward to seventh grade. I was in Daleville for half a semester there. And that's actually where I burnt my failst. For failst. Failst. I burnt my failst. Burnt my. Burnt. Wow. I built. I can speak, guys. I promise. I built my first website in seventh grade. And. You won't believe what it was about. 
I built it all on a word program through, I think it was Publisher. You could build websites on Publisher at the time. And then you could actually publish that website from Publisher as well. And it would host it on your own server. And it was a free thing to do, which is now incredibly difficult when it should be easier. Uh, if you got a lot of traffic though coming to your website, probably not the best way to go. Check for other things online or get a hold of me. I'll be happy to build you a website. But that website, black and orange, I was way into orange back then. I had this orange jumpsuit I wore all the time. It was awful. It was ugly. I loved it though. Should have never had it. Nana, why the hell did you buy that for me? It was bad. And it was all based around Sonic. And the logo up in the top left-hand corner was Shadow. Shadow had just come out. Sonic Adventure 2 on GameCube. King of games right there. One of the best ones ever. And if you know, you know. And that was that website. That was the first website. And there was kind of really no turning back. I've probably built 30, 40, 50, 60 websites. I can do them pretty quick. HTML, coding, CSS, SAS, etc. And... That's all great, but there's so many easier ways to do website design these days. And hopefully that will be a topic in the near future. We can break down an easy way to build different websites and build them in simple ways and change it if you know how to code. There's a lot of free ways as well we could talk about in the future to learn coding if you want to learn coding. And then there's even inexpensive ways to learn coding that get really in detail in depth for you. So we can jump into that at that point in time but website design naturally took me to graphic design and graphic design was very different for me very difficult my my first 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 experiences were like paint and I would consider that graphic design because you were utilizing a computer to create some kind of graphic and I got pretty decent with paint through high school and stuff and could do quite a bit with it uh, but I would never consider myself a graphic designer in those years. At Ball State, I actually had a class. The class walked me through a bunch of different Adobe programs, Illustrator being my favorite, and that would be where I really got into graphic design. Website design natively kind of took me in that direction because I needed logos, I needed different things you know, graphically for websites so that I could really get into kind of the nitty-gritty of it all. And... I really enjoyed graphic design. I still enjoy graphic design. It's something that if someone needed a logo, they didn't require me to draw because I cannot draw with a sim. I used to be able to draw. I gave up drawing. And definitely something you need to stick with. And my wife, she was a drawer, and she won't draw now because she feels the same way. So I wish she would because she's fantastic. She's way better than I ever was. But drawing... Don't ask me for drawing. I can do it. I will do it reluctantly if you pressure me enough. I'm happy to do it if I need to. But graphic design all on a computer, Adobe Illustrator, absolutely fantastic. I love that. I could do that for days. And I think my coolest logo that I ever created was actually for the record label. It's called Seeker Records. And it's still out there. So if you need music released, if you want some mix, things like that, I'm happy to help you with it. But um, it's a very cool circle logo. The actual Egyptian script in the logo is real, and it does say something. I don't remember what it says at all. I have no clue what it says. Don't ask what it says. I guess I could get on there and translate it back to English uh, via the text uh, box. Just change the font. But um, I, I got really in-depth with that one. That one just started out as a basic logo, and the basic logo transformed into a circle emblem. And the circle emblem, I needed to add more, and then eventually I wanted to change the color, and I wanted to throw it on a, on a black background. And then I am making up this really, really cool gold circle emblem on a black background, and it popped. It was awesome. Definitely one of the best logos I ever made. I made quite a few other ones. I've ma I made my uh, logo for... My photography, I just ordered a new one, though. I didn't I didn't want to do the new font logo I've got coming. Look forward to seeing that. But I also use graphic design every single day for my videos. So for thumbnails for YouTube, you know, that is actually one of my favorite things to do. 
uh, the photography mixed with the graphic design, getting the lettering in there, getting the wording, making sure that this thumbnail pops. That is my favorite thing to do with videos. And that's actually kind of where we're moving next. We're jumping into the video category and where I started with that. What do I remember about video? What do I remember? I mean, where did it start? I know it was forever ago. I remember my dad carrying cameras around. He says, you know, he thinks back to different Florida vacations and he just remembers them in black and white because back in the day they didn't, when you looked through the viewfinder, you know, it was black and white. It wasn't even color. And I remember him having the camera all the time. But what I really remember is at some point in time, my grandfather, he got a camera and it was a camcorder. I had tapes and I would take that around and I would record things and then I would record over the tape and then I would record over the tape and n we don't have any of the tapes, unfortunately. I'd love to see what I was recording at what age. I just remember it. I don't remember when, which kind of sucks. You know, when you think back on different things, you'd like to remember those time periods so you can kind of piece together everything and how it all came together. How did you end up where you ended up? And I don't remember. I know sometime near graduating high school, I don't remember what year we went to the Bahamas, and that was when I got my first GoPro. Uh, but before even that, I was in high school and I was doing sketch comedy with my friend Aaron Franklin. And that was really fun because that was a very different experience with the sketch comedy we ended up getting this little canon camera i actually have a video on youtube if you want to check it out and it's linked to some of the other sketch comedy videos that are still on youtube they're just hidden so you can't watch them because they're pretty embarrassing but uh check out my youtube and you can see what ca what little nikon point and shoot i had and we use that all the time i remember i came to his house one day and i said dude i got this idea let's make a video and that was the first video that really kicked off the whole experience with sketch comedy we have one that was on an old youtube account it's called ramen worst video ever we had this wonderful idea this story of aaron sitting at the computer doing something on the computer listening to music and he decides i gotta pee really bad and then something just transport him to the bathroom he pees and it's this crazy pee and then he gets transported back to the room and then meantime, while we were making this video, I was making some ramen noodle in the back. And we decided we're going to incorporate this ramen noodle into it. And so it ended with him getting up, running to the kitchen, eating my ramen. And then I punch him in the face and I take my ramen back. The problem was is we didn't know how to tell a story at the time. And we didn't know how to make it apparent that he was being teleported. Something teleported him. And that is something I've told him we're going to remake. We're going to redo this video. It's going to be a lot of fun when we redo this video, but we have to redo it. It's period. Uh, his wife, Shelby, she watched it. She hated it because that's how bad it is. Um, but I told her I'm going to make him redo the video. So, But I think that was – I was 15. I wasn't driving yet. And that was the first video that I actually made, edited, put together. We used the Windows editing software. Uh, I didn't even have the Nikon point-and-shoot then. I had a 10-megapixel point-and-shoot shot in some crappy quality of video. Um, if I could find the master file, I'm, I'm sure it's not as bad as I think it is, but it didn't hold up online very well. So it's just it's bad. It's a bad video. Check out my YouTube, though. There's links to that ramen video as well. But after that, 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 I came to his house, and we made that first video. And from there, it just kind of clicked for a while. And I got better. I was also fighting at the time to get some viewerships from uh, my friend uh, Dalton, Dalton Morrison. He also started a YouTube uh sketch video sketch comedy group at the time we were both inspired by a group called the room shop and i was trying to steal views from him and 
it didn't work out very well. Uh, he was a little bit more popular in school, so it was easier for him to get the views. I always thought at the time, and I don't think it's any secret, Dalton, so if you're watching this or you do end up watching this, I always thought at the time I had a little bit more talent to start out with, but you definitely got better. You kept with it. You you accomplished quite a bit with it, and you became a, definitely a better filmmaker than me. Uh, I don't know where you're at now with it, but I keep trying to get you to come out, so hopefully soon you know, we can work on a video together. It comes full circle. It was at one point in time we didn't get along, and now we're friends, so that would be cool, but at the time I was trying to get views from him we had a little bit of a competition going on and I was working with Aaron and we were doing these different videos and I look back at him and some of them were just god awful and I hope nobody ever 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 sees those videos but it's gonna happen I'm sure they're on the internet somebody has them somewhere even though I've hidden them um, I have shared a few though so if you check out my YouTube you can see a few of those uh, my favorite one is actually called Where's Aaron? I was sitting at home one day and I wanted to make a video, but my partner wasn't there. And I was like, where the crap is Aaron? Like, why is Aaron not here? Aaron's here every single day. What the heck? And it dawned on me. I was like, well, hell, I'll make a video. I will make a video about Aaron not being here. And I'll show him that he should have been here. So... What I did was is I grabbed my sister, grabbed a tripod, and I put together a short video. And it's actually my favorite one. It, it went together really well. There's a few things I learned from it that bothered me. And I looked back at it, and it could have been done way better. And I should redo that video as well, even though it's almost kind of perfect at the same time. I couldn't redo the video here. The room I had, the setup, and everything I had at the time – made the video what the video was and there's no way I could redo that there's no way that I could change any of that so I don't know if I could redo it I want to redo it I want to make it better I, I want to get better audio quality I am a better actor now there's a point in time where I scream no in the video like if you think of Luke Skywalker and Empire Strikes Back it was worse than that actually yeah, he had a bad no and it was ugly but mine was worse and so I could redo that. I could make that part better. There's a part where my sister pops her head in the door and she looks up when I'm down. And I could fix that. But I think really those are the only two things that need fixed with it. I don't think of anything else that could really be changed. At the end, I do this thing where I find Aaron. And maybe I could fix that vocal part. But still, there's not really a need to fix that. Just those two other things. So that would be interesting. That would be definitely something to go back and redo, fix that video, fix the other few videos that were really good. I had this one called Because I Can. The idea was I started a company called Because I Can. Why? Because I Can. So that's what we did. We started that video, and it was a fun one. That was actually the one that kicked it off. I don't think I could redo that video either because I drove this – I think it was a 96 or 98 Volvo 850 GLT. And when I got out of that car, I had this, this suit uh, jacket on and everything, and it just kind of all went together. And, I'm well, I guess I got a Buick Century now, so I could redo it with the Buick. So maybe I could redo that one. That would be an interesting one to redo. There's quite a bit in that one. It's actually one of the longer videos I made. But I didn't edit it as well as I could have edited it. It's not a bad edit, but it's not a great, excuse me, a great edit by any means. So I could definitely redo that. But those are kind of where I started with video. It, and it was all shot on that point and shoot camera. We did this one video. It was uh, set up because we didn't have a tripod. We got this step ladder and we got a whole bunch of books and we put all these all these books together to even the camera out and I, I worked we didn't have what we needed by any means we didn't have the camera equipment but we made it work and it was a lot of fun and so video was always something that really stuck with me so you know fast forward again you know we went on that cruise we got that GoPro and I never ended up doing anything really with that GoPro at the time I did get a lot of cool video and I experimented with the GoPro the waterproofing you know going down water slides which is actually cool because there was no uh 
there was no lifeguard at the time so we were doing like flips down it and spinning and going backwards we were going i guess upside down if you can go upside down but that's the way i would describe it on a water slide and we really just kind of did whatever we wanted on that water slide and we got it all on on film we went to a different couple parties uh that some hotels were having nearby and we got all that on video we got the cruise boat pool on video and all this video that i never did anything with and i always wanted to do a a travel video and i never i've never done a travel video i always record it and then i always get like stuck i get in this mode where i'm like i'm gonna put this travel video together and then i don't i get afraid of it i get worried that it's not going to be a good travel video and i don't know why i think that because i i know i can do it and i know i can do a great travel video i just need to do it i think what i was scared of at the time was not knowing how to do good b-roll and i do know how to do good b-roll now so it's definitely something that moving forward i'm going to shoot for i'm going to get a better travel video Uh, last year I went with my wife and her family to Florida and I got a bunch of great video but I didn't shoot it in the right uh, frames per second or the right shutter speed but I could still edit it in a way that would make it a really good video so I don't know why I haven't done that yet I do have a lot of it though Uh, I got this really cool clip of this older black gentleman he was sitting on the pier and he was playing the guitar and I mean I got all around this guy I got his fingers moving, I got his fingers strumming, I got his feet tapping, I got him singing, I got cool angles of the guitars, I mean there's a bunch of good b-roll and I think what I would want to do is I would want to use that as a background for the full video. You know video kind of started out with that, set the tone and then have his music playing the whole time in the background but I think the problem I have is the audio wasn't on for like half of the song. So I would have to, I don't know if I could do that, but what I, do, what I would do is I would use that and I would, I would have that play, I, that would set the tone of everything. I'd have me, my wife walking on the beach. You know, I have this guy getting out of a straight jacket for when the kind of music really picks up. And I mean, just all this wonderful idea for it, but I guess it just never came together. And so like I said, moving forward at some point in time, I'm definitely, definitely, definitely going to get some kind of travel video a lot of good b-roll i'm gonna put it all together i did a uh, video on youtube recently and i used only my iphone which instagram's on right now and i used it and i did a full video with just the iphone and it was very cool uh so i definitely could could do quite a bit um and and i'm gonna do better for that because i need to do that i need to do that for sure So that was my experiences with video. Now I do YouTube. I release one to two videos a week. You can find me on YouTube. Just search Jacob King or search Jamaki604. That's J-A-M-A-K-I-604. Excuse me. I'm burping up a storm right now. I'm sorry, guys. It's bad. I wonder how podcasters avoid that. I came with the water this time. So I was choking last time. This time I'm burping. So I need to look up what to do to not, what do broadcasters do to not burp? What is the secret? What is the secret to not burping? Oh, we're spilling water. I spilled water. You, I I guess the cup was fuller than I thought it was, but whatever. Wood desk. It's good. So, oh, what a nightmare. But yeah, that was video. And last but not least, I'm going to go and head and hit photo. I mean, there's lots of areas of production we could talk about, but these are the big ones. These are the ones that kind of funnel out into everything else. And, you know, for me, photo's always been something big. I remember the Polaroid cameras back in the day uh, being able to take a picture and they just pop out, you know, and immediately uh, take shape in front of your face. That was always cool. And I remember shooting uh, with 35 millimeters. Um, I remember getting the disposable cameras growing up. And I think photography has always just been a part of my life. And, you know, if you think about everything else, if you think about music, if you think about website design, graphic design, and video, you know, one of the biggest things that comes together is how it's all done. And I think the most important thing about photography 
this composition. I mean, you also got to worry about your exposure. You got to worry about, you know, if the, the picture's in focus and everything. But I think the most important thing is composition, is how it's done. And if you look at the rest of production in a whole, it, I mean, that's what's important about all of it. It's all about that design. It's all about making sure it's designed and done right. Um, even with music, making sure that, you know, it's, it's audible in the way that it should be. So, you know, it's... It, it, for me, photo is, is the most important thing. I love my camera. I don't go anywhere without my camera. I love being able to do just about anything with a camera. You, you know, you, I guess even right now, like on this video, you know, one of the things from photography that's helped me out is this little aperture light I have over here. And for me, I kicked it on. It's kind of lit my face a little bit on... Uh, on Instagram, if I kick that light off, it's pretty dark uh, because all the light that's coming from behind me, you know, the light behind me is helping out the rest of the room. It's showing you some of the depth and obviously the detail in the rest of the room. And it is what it is. That That's that's what the lighting is for. It's giving me what I wanted to have. And, you know, that's something that comes over from photography. So it was, it's definitely a transferable skill it goes into everything else i think photography is the most important thing i've learned and there's just one moment in particular that i remember you know being a big moment for me for photography i was in high school i think i was a sophomore i was with the church and i was given their canon t2 t3 maybe and i was in charge of pictures and we were at pizza hut i hated pizza hut at the time They've got much better. Um, I still hate their cheese-filled crust. It just ruins pizza. It needs to just never have cheese in it. But I don't like cheese, so that's that. Anyways, we were at Pizza Hut at the end of the day. I remember afterward when we tried to leave, the, the keys were locked in the car, so we had to hang out a little bit longer. But we were sitting in a booth. I was sitting with the two youth leaders, and one of the youth leaders, he had his child with him in the car seat. And so, you know, we're sitting in the booth, uh, I am on one side with one youth leader. He's on the other side with this kid sitting next to him and close to the wall. And on his shirt, it was a plain white shirt, and the plain white shirt had the life mushroom from Mario, the green mushroom, dead center on his chest. And I remember him, and, and for you guys that are listening, uh, he was a taller white gentleman. He was about six foot, dark hair, had a little bit of, of scruff, on his face it wasn't a lot it was like maybe he shaved like three days before and and he's sitting there and the car seats right next to him and it's one of those bucket seats with the you know the handle that you hold and the car seat dangles and it's really awkward to carry because of how the car seat is but it's sitting there sideways and the baby's looking at him and and he's got his arm up on the back of the booth and it's draped around like as if someone was sitting there but it's just kind of circling the the uh, car seat and he's kind of turned, just his head though, the rest of his body straight, and he's looking very, very lovingly at his baby, and I took the picture. And the way I edited that picture, it was all black and white, except for the Mario mushroom. And it was just really cool to me, because it symbolized, you know, new life, his new life, his baby. You know, I was there with, with this faith group, and and, you know, all of kind of the emotions that were going on within the faith group to begin with. And then this new life and then the symbolism that came with the picture. And, I mean, it just stood out. There was just so much that you could tell in this in this moment, in this picture, in the story. And and I think that's one of the biggest things for me with photography is, is every time I look through the lens, every time that I'm focusing a picture, I just see more emotion. And I feel that emotion way better, and it's a good feeling every single time. That's why I love it. That's why it stands out the most to me. The The camera is, you know, it's a lens into the soul, some people say. And so it really just, it gets me elated. It, it makes me smile. It makes me really happy to be able to, to pull my camera out. And I mean, even look at a landscape differently. And as I do more and more and more and more photography, you know, I take a walk every day, you know, I see it bleed into all those different things. On my walk every single day, you know, I am looking at, um, you know, just the different things that are around me and, and 
there's, for example, up the road, it's all farm. There's cows, there's cattle, there's there's the different barns, and then there's the big open fields, and then way off in the background, you've got the tree lines, and you've got all the different, you know, trees coming up, the different types of trees, the different types of leaves, all the different greens, and everything that just kind of comes together, and, you know, normally it would just be a view, and, you know, the sky's a view, the clouds are a view, the, the sunset, the sunrise is a view, and you're just looking around, and normally it's just a few. But the more and more and more, the more I do photography, it's it's not just a view anymore. I can see that emotion that I'm normally feeling, and it makes me view and, and feel the world in a different way. And so it stands out more to me, and photography you know, means that much more to me. So it's just it's a cool feeling. It's, it's cool to have that bleed over, and not just bleed over into every other area of production I do, but into my life, into my daily life, into the different ways that I notice it, the different ways that I use it, you know, how it's benefiting me, how it's making me happier, and it's just a, a really, really cool feeling. So, you know, that's photography. That's in a nutshell. That was my first real big memory with photography, you know, why I enjoy doing photography, taking the different photos that I do. And, you know, I like sharing them with you guys too. I like you guys to be able to see, you know, my different views, you know, what I'm seeing, what I'm feeling, what emotion I'm capturing at the time. And even further, you know, it's it's neat to be able to see what you guys think of each of the pictures that I take, you know, to see what you thought of it, to see what you thought of the composition, the color, you know, the editing of the photo, you know, what I changed, what I did. And one of the things I'm looking forward to is getting more and more creative. You know, I spend a decent amount of time scrolling through Pinterest, and I've noticed that a lot of creative photographers are using glass in a different way in front of a lens and I want to start doing that a little bit or even like a shawl I saw one today where a girl had a shawl on top of her head and it was a white shawl the shawl was dangling she grabbed the camera put that underneath the shawl held it a little bit about arm's length and aimed it at her face and took the picture and the way the light came through the shawl the way the shawl was was a leading line to her face was really cool and it was just neat to see that little bit of different use of material to take a pretty cool picture. I've seen a lot of photos through jars lately or through glass doors or windows and the way the reflection is doing everything. I actually took a picture the other day of my sister. She was standing next to a building that was a really dark tent. It was glass and the way she was standing next to it reflected her and the rest of the building. So there's two of her in this picture. And it's just a really, really neat picture, I think. Um, I've seen a lot of reflective photography lately, and I'm looking to get into that as well. So in a nutshell, that's my experiences with all of the different levels of production, you know, how I've gotten into it, you know, where I've started, what I've done with it. Um, but let's talk about what I'm hoping to do with it. So one of the big things and one of the points of this podcast and moving forward is – to build a production company. And this podcast will hopefully be a face of the production company. I hope to have a lot of guests on here, uh, at least a guest per show starting next week. We'll talk about, you know, the main things that I just talked about now, but every area of production that you can get into. We'll have great interviews, great conversations. We'll cover news, uh, especially news in the YouTube world because uh, there's a lot that goes on there that people don't know about. So I'd love to cover that for you guys. But, I mean, big pictures, I don't see or have found a podcast that serves this purpose. So I hope that, you know, by creating this podcast, getting these different creators, different influencers, and everybody else on the show that, you know, we can be that podcast. But even more importantly, you know, like I said, this is a company. We're going to offer website design. We're going to offer graphic design. We're going to offer different video services, photography services. I mean, eventually we'll get into, you know, other different areas of production such as clothing, et cetera, and, and that's in the future. But, yeah, that's that's what JK Productions, Jacob King Productions, whatever you want to call it right now, I think we're leaning towards JK Productions. I'm leaning, not we. I'm pretty good at talking business speak, but i got to remember it's just me. So JK Productions is what I'm leaning towards. I think it's easier. I, but I think 
that'll be the nickname because I think Jacob King Productions sounds a bit more professional. Now, the only thing I'm concerned about is if I do grow, you know, do I call it Jacob King Productions when I'm bringing people on? Or do I call it JK Productions and just start doing that now? So, um, food for thought, you know, throw me a comment. Uh, tell me what you think. You know, tell me what you thought of the show. Tell me what your stories were uh, with music or with video, photo. You know, what do you remember? What was your defining moment in the different areas of production that you do? Tell me what you think. I would love to hear it. Leave it in the comments. Uh, throw me an email. You can get a hold of me at jacob at jacobmking.com. And uh, I look forward to hearing from you guys. So with that, you know, my usual is, is saying with that, I'll see you in the next video. But uh, for those of you that are watching the video, I will, I will see you in the next video. Uh, but for you guys listening, you know, I guess I need a new uh, catchphrase. Let's see if I can be truly, truly original here. I'm kidding. I'm, I already know what I'm going to say. All right, guys. With that, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, for you people on YouTube and Facebook, hit that like button because it helps so much. If you're on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe. If you're listening to this podcast, subscribe for those notifications so you can see. There's going to be one every single week. You can tune in live every single week, Saturdays at 7.30. I'm toying with the idea of doing a different time because, you know, most people aren't going to tune in at 7.30 on a Saturday. Uh, it's not like the old days where that's what people did. So, But anyways, I look forward to chatting with you guys again. I'm going to throw up a number two at some point in time in the future so I can have some guests call in. I might want to stream those though, so not too sure. But again, guys, thanks for joining me. And uh, with that, I'll see you in the next podcast.